Hello, YouTubers, and welcome to round two at Brewski Ball. Uh, we're doing the second day, the Saturday, drinking more awesome beer. Again, thanks a ton to Brewski Marcus for the invite. Uh, yeah, Simon hasn't showed up yet. No. And he was so freaking drunk yesterday. <laughs> So uh, we just had a Pilsner from Green Bench, an American style Pilsner. Yeah, I forget the name of it, but it was made with corn. It was pretty refreshing. Yeah, very nice. Uh, a good place to start. Yeah. And then I moved on to Hidden Springs just to you know get it before the crowds because they're getting ready outside. Look at that line. Getting crazy. Yeah. So this one was called Darkness, uh, Darkness in the Light. Darkness in the Light. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a made with cookie, oil. yeah. It's a cookie dough and pearl stuff. Bourbon barrel. Bourbon barrel. Yeah. And you have. And I have a pilsner from uh, Interboro, uh, which is called Alpine Style. So I'm I'm still a bit hungover from yesterday, so I'm not gonna go into the dark stuff. Uh, right He's away. the one who's doing worse of all of us. <laughs> yeah, <whatever>. absolutely. <laughs> he just this morning he was just standing like this, staring at me. <laughs> Are you okay? No, shit. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm doing quite all right. Yeah. But I also drank a lot of water and, I don't know, bread is also quite all right. For some reason it just hits the beer on Yeah, but it always does. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, pitch black thick imperial stout. It smells like fucking Oreo cookies and bur dunked in bourbon. Almost yeah. Oreo cookies and ice cream. We had that one uh, oh, it on Thursday. Good. Wow. Josh was standing on his own from the brewery, but I was thinking we'll try and get him in a video later when he has some help. Man, I'm gonna try this. Mmm. Oh. Wow. Hidden Springs. I wanna drink more of their stuff. This is amazing. It tastes like just cookie, almost like the, uh, the Ben and Jerry's cookie dough switch up thing, where it's like Oreo cookie and Cookie batter in a in a, an ice cream. It's like I'm getting those kind of vibes. Like big cookie, chocolate, really dense chocolate, brownie, fudgy flavors, and then this rich bourbon character with like sweet vanilla and a little bit of coconut. And then it's just thick as Indian oil. Yeah, I it's don't remember. Super it. thick. It's cold now, so it tastes like a dessert, like a real ice cream dessert or something. I think as it warms, it probably gets even crazier. What about you? Uh, really good pilsner. Uh, it has like. Fairly hoppy and uh, pretty uh, nose, and then uh, super refreshing and clean pilsner. Absolutely not bad. It's a bar makes nice lager. Yeah, yeah. And it's we also just had ants. <laughs> it's a breakfast, no, yeah, from ants. from vanilla. Penit, no, no, from beer here. Not beer here. So beer here make a sour has a sour with them that's made with uh, forest ants, red forest ants. And yeah, we had to try that. What are you having, Brett? I'm uh, having the o double dry hopped OJ run from Narrow Gauge. Oh, that's great. Uh, and yeah, it's an orange bomb with like a touch of maybe grapefruit and a bit of uh, piney thing, but like huge orange. Uh, such a drinkable double IPA that's really popping. It's great. Yeah. I'd say two thumbs up for mine. Two thumbs up for this. Two thumbs up for this as well. There you go, that's the start. Hopefully we'll get Simon in soon, whenever he arrives. <laughs> and uh, yeah, see you with more beers and brews, get all good times. Cheers. Okay guys, so we wanted to start easy and drink some lagers and stuff, but I kind of want to get to all the hype stuff as well before the crowds arrive. There's still people getting in. Yeah. Uh, so I had to get this. This is from Transient. This is Buckley Reserve 2. So this year, they, uh, for the, uh, oh fuck. <laughs> this year for uh, their, uh, I think they call it Bark Lord Day or something like that. Instead of Dark Lord? <laughs> Bark Lord. Bark Lord. Uh, they had like loads of releases and variants and Dan has actually been kind enough to bring some variants for, for us to review. That we've got the guys from Trench and Chris. They are super cool guys. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but the two hype releases was these. Buckley Reserve 1 and 2. This is Reserve 2 that they brought, which is... Uh, Canuckley, or I guess it's finish, it's Buckley, their base, yeah. then aged in uh, bourbon fooders, so huge bourbon fooders for six months. Hey, Mark. Uh, yeah, uh, aged in big bourbon fooders for six months, and afterwards in the Blitz Maple Syrup bourbon. So it's kind of like a double barrel aged Canuckley. Yeah, that's uh, quite the beer. And this one is a uh, KCBC's uh, Lime Lager. So it looks like yeah, it really doesn't look like a lager. And, I, and I'm thinking there's got to be a pun in that name, something like, there's the band, something like KCBC or 
probably. Yeah, some some of those letters. Oh, wow, there's so much fucking bourbon on this. This smells exceptional. And coffee. This smells so saturated with barrel. We already talked when we reviewed Kentucky. It had loads of barrel character. This is just like even like deeper. I like, have a whiff. Yeah, so much bourbon, maple syrup, coffee, uh, there's brown Ooh. sugar. There's almost something reminding me of cinnamon, but there's no cinnamon in it. Mm. No, it, it, it actually has this like slightly spicy. I yeah. think that might be from the barrel. Yeah. Like the oak. There's definitely lots of charred oak as well. Fuck, it's not delicious. Vanilla, chocolate, and you smell it. Yeah, this it has a huge lime peel. Yeah. Yeah, but also kind of vanilla-like notes, I'd say. And then herbal, like from, from the hops, I guess. I'm ready to try this. Thing. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Oh. Holy oh. shit, that's sour. This is one of the most bourbon forward beers I think I've ever had without being boozy. Yeah. And the carbonation on this compared to regular Kentucky, we talked about in the review that it was a little bit too high. This is perfect. It's super gentle and it's super thick, which Kentucky lacked a little bit as well. Uh, even though there's a great beer. This is just like taking that to the next level. So much fucking barrel character on this. It's crazy. This is uh, one of the beers that's uh, really good to drink just before you make out with a girl because it makes your mouth go. <laughs> it's so fucking sour. <laughs> like loads of rich coffee. It's almost like Kahlua-esque because of the sweetness from the barrel and everything. Uh, rich vanilla, coca nibs. It's almost like, like, yeah, this brown sugar, there's definitely like brown sugary maple, but it's like real maple. It's not like this artificial Can we, uh, maple thing. Yeah, Th that is fucking exceptional. It smells so fucking good. Is this a lager? Yep. It, it tastes like a sour, like Corona thing. That's good. That's really mm, fucking That's amazing great. beer. I think this is on level with like the Hidden Springs. Yeah, yeah. That is crazy good. Yeah. That's that's big, two thumbs big, up. Big vanilla on yeah. that one. That's crazy. And it's super thick too. Yeah. Uh, wow, yeah. Um, Brett, do you want to talk about yours? If you come on over. Then I can hold. I have the Methodic from uh, Transient. It's part of the like Lambic inspired sour program. Wait a sec. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's part of yeah the uh, like lambic inspired program. Um, it's super like apple vinegary and has a lot of like uh, sour pear, uh, maybe a touch of apricot. Yep. Um, tastes like a maybe a, a, a lambic that has a bit more like an acidic. Sound is just a touch. Uh, I would say, yeah, probably a small two thumbs up. That is a huge two thumbs up. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, that is so much barrel character. This is also nice. Really thick and oily too. Mm. Oh yeah. That is just, it's like they took Kentucky and made it even crazier. Yeah, it's much. just so damn good. I think it's also a little bit strong in ABV. They probably changed the recipe yeah. so it could fit double barrel aging. Loads of caramel, maple, vanilla, coffee, coffee. Yeah, a big like bourbon, whiskey kind of flavor, but not booze. Yes, which is amazing. Yeah. I think slowly Kentucky and the variants or Buckley and the variants is becoming my favorite uh, breakfast now. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah huge <laughs> two thumbs up. Maybe like this one, 175 thumbs up. <laughs> Ready to try this one. Uh, what would you say for that one? I'm one. It smells like um, just like the lime, uh, like uh, acid. It smells almost like coronal lime. Wow, that is sour, yeah. I actually think I'm gonna give that zero. It's too sour. 
I'm glad I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Casey I, I made really, really nice beers, but this was too crazy. But uh, yeah. otherwise, two thumbs up for me for this one. Yeah. One seventy-five and no thumbs. Yeah, it's too sorry. But hey, stick around. We're gonna try some more, and hopefully Simon will be here soon. Cheers. Cheers. Okay guys, so I'm back here with Simon from Real Elk Craft Beer, a good friend of mine, you know, I mean, we've done loads of videos together these yeah, yeah, weekends, it's been great. Yeah, it's been amazing, and, uh, yeah, yeah. We're having some uh, some pills, and this is what we got, we really enjoy drinking when we've had a few. It's super refreshing. Uh, yeah, so this is Pilki. Pujala. 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 And this is their German Pilsner, gently dry hop. I'm really drinking hops. already. You can tell about a few this well, as well. Don't let go of me, my lover. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I have you on the mic. Come on, hold me. <laughs> Very grassy. Spiky, naturally, like like stinging nettles. You know, yes. what's the word for stinging nettles in Danish? I like how you're on your toes. Yeah, because you, because I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> I'm on my tiptoes. Right. No, but yeah, it's nettling. Yeah, stinging nettle in Danish is brandenelle. Brandenelle. Yeah. And I'm definitely getting that. Uh, it smells just like really classic pills. I would say it's a little bit more sweet malt than the Pivo. Yeah, let's try it. Smells so great. Cheers. Oh, what's the ABV? Five. Five percent. Cheers. I love drinking Pilsners. Oh, it's very different. Uh, definitely more malt. Right. More sweet malt than the other one. Well, when you do continuation, so so if you've just seen the other pill, oh no, we haven't any other pills. That was on my channel. Sorry. Yeah, well, hop on Simon's channel and watch a review of Pivo pills from OO. So that, that is really clean. Really clean. Really, this has a bit more malt sweetness. It's not as bitter. Uh, I like the other one a bit more because it had a bit more hop character. The hop character still shines a bit on that with like grassy and some nettle flavors. This is more like got a big malt build on it. Yeah, it? yeah. But it's still really refreshing. I love drinking these lagers today. It's, it's what's revitalizing me as well, you know. It's just it's nice. I'll say an eight out of ten. I'm gonna go eight. Scale. Yeah, I reckon uh, eight. For Seven, me, eight out of ten. For the thumbs, I'd say like one and a half, one seventy-five, like almost two thumbs up. Two thumbs up, yeah, it's a great beer. Eight out of ten. Stone the crows. Stone the crows. Cheers. Cheers everyone. Thanks for having me on the channel, Peter. No worries, mate. Okay guys, so we're back with some more beer. Brett was a sneaky guy when I was reviewing with Simon. He went out to get some beers that we should definitely review. Yeah. So uh, this is from Three Sons. This is their Mounds Bar. Barrel Ace Mounds Bar. Mounds Bar. Yeah, Barrel Ace Bar. Which is on... Uh, I actually don't remember the percentage. But uh, but it's a coconut imperial style aged for 20 months in Grim Barrels. Yes. And this is Anatolia Skull from uh, Bottle Logic. And it's a uh, fig and espresso imperial port. Yeah. Uh, Aged in Willet bourbon. Yeah, and this yeah, this is the Turkey version with uh, Turkish uh, figs. Yeah. So this one. Ooh, actually, interestingly enough, less coconut than I expected. Okay. Are we sure that we try and smell yours? Is that coconutty? Yeah. So you have the we have we switched. Let me smell. I can. What? Yeah, we switched. You have the coconut. Yeah. So this is definitely the bottle logic. The cameraman? No, sorry. It's all, it's, it's, it's us. Because uh, this is like espresso and yeah. smoky. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like a huge bourbon barrel with like coconutty vibes. It's not like crazy pastry, but it's it's a big barrel of espresso. It's quite spicy, this one as well. Yeah. Uh, this is mapley, caramely, vanilla. Spicy, bourbony. Well, it's quite nice though. It's like really plummy or figgy, and then like like a shot of espresso. Almost yeah. like you did like a dark fruit espresso with bourbon. Yeah. Medium mouthfeel, quite silky as in a porter, not crazy thick. It's quite nice. This is uh, quite fantastic. The, it, it is. It's not the thickest of the thickest, but it's it's thick. You know, it's really thick, and it has loads of coconut but a big like bourbon uh, flavor not like again not a booze, not booze just like the, the, the buckley reserve yeah okay huge vanilla huge like almond i gotta switch <laughs> uh yeah it's it's really damn good oh it smells great yeah 
So, oh yeah, this is so different. Yeah, but it, it's actually nice to have two that are so different. There's a little bit of licorice going on. Yeah, I see that. Mm. Cocoa nuts. Holy shit, so much bourbon. So much bourbon and coconut. <laughs> but bourbon flavor. And it's got this milky coconut thing. Yeah. I would say it's more like a milky coconut barrel aged stout more than actual like total bounty bar. Yeah, it doesn't taste like a bounty bar per it, se. It's not enough chocolate. I think the base would, if, if, if it wasn't barrel aged for like 20 months, it probably would more so. You yeah. know, it tastes quite a lot like a bounty bar. But it's just really nice. I, I, I think this is a two thumb up for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that's like, yeah, 175. It's really nice, but I'm not like as blown away. Yeah, I just think I just think that one is so good yeah. that you feel like this shouldn't get a get a two thumbs yeah. up. But I think, but it is on like, its own probably a two thumbs up because yeah. for a coffee border with the plum or figs, oh, figs, yeah, it's you know they exactly. are like this. They're like dark fruity. They're like it is what it is, and it, and it has like an espresso really intense kind of. Sure. It's just sure. not. It maybe lacks a bit of body. <laughs> That's probably. The, like main thing with the tracker. Yeah. I think if, if we would were, were to give this like a numeric uh, grade on the channel, it would probably be like a 93, maybe it's so That was about to say 94, whereas yeah. this would be like a 96, 97. Yeah. And maybe even higher. Yeah. For me. Maybe 97 yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. But two thumbs up for this, one seven five. Yeah. So more beer to come and uh, more water. <laughs> Simon's not good at drinking water. But uh, hey, someone's gotta do it. Yeah. Major of macros and yeah, bread of anomalies. Back with another takeover of the channel at Brewskeville 2019. Yeah, and uh, this time we've actually moved away from the Imperial Stout. Yes. And I'd say give ourselves uh, an applause here. Yeah, I think so, <laughs> because it is very tempting to jump on all the hyped barrel aged Imperial Stouts, and we have done so. But now it's time for something else. Yeah. Uh, so I'm having a Speciations Cereal Passage, yep. which is a sour ale with ginger, uh, lime, lime, and mango, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's oak aged. Yeah. And this is Fontiflora's Tip of the Vibers. It's uh, like an Appalachian uh, wild ale with uh, mellow grapes. Yeah. And actually, that's, that's one of the beers. Yeah. From front of floor, we've had quite a few times. Yeah, this this is almost like too. a classic for us. Yeah, because we've had it like three or four times almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but I don't but think we've we've reviewed it. No, no, so, I don't uh, think we have. And uh, and and that beer is just yeah. But the flora are really good at the wild ales. And yeah, just generally a great brewery. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, it has like. A, Quite a, quite a lot of uh, ginger beer uh, oh, yeah, okay. notes, and then it has like a like a juicy sourness from which maybe, I, the I mango? The, maybe the mango, maybe the lime, which yeah. uh, contributes to that. I'd say uh, more like lime zest than actual lime juice. Yeah, this for sure has like a big red grapey component, like grape skin, almost into that leathery. Leathery uh, uh, red grape thing, uh, lots of oak, um, almost like uh, dried uh, bark or something huh. like uh, forest bark. Yeah, that's kind of what I get. Yeah, so let's try. Right. Cheers. Cheers. That's sour. That's a lot of fun. Oh, okay, I, did, I thought it was very sour. No, no, no. It has like a like a very pleasant sourness. Yeah. But it's like it's it's hard to tell because it's um. I'd say the the thing that just kicks into my mind is like an air freshener, but but yeah, that doesn't sound very good. But it really it actually tastes quite good. Yeah. I'm getting more. I think the Melo gives more of a like fresh 
berry kind of thing, mm. taste-wise. Mm. Whereas the aroma is more into like that leathery, oaky, woody thing. The, the taste is more of like a fresh berry, almost like an elderberry. Yeah. Uh, maybe a touch of uh, elderflower, actually. Um, quite oaky. You, you really sense there's some uh, kind of vanilla-esque oak in play with this one. Um, mm. Quite floral and yeah, fresh berry forest forest vibes. Yeah. Should we switch? Yeah. Oh yeah, this one is really like this is a quirky one. Yeah. But in a really good way. It really it really works. I think the ginger plays so well with yeah. the lime. Yeah, it plays super good. Yeah. And then the mango just gives this gives this like sweetness or like a juicy component. This has super much like dusty grapes. Mm. Damn, this is really like super intense. Yeah. You sense this is like an 8% sour. Yeah. And this is just super, super enjoyable. Yeah. This is really a summer beer. Good amount of like a lot of still quite a lot of complexity. Yeah, yeah, from the oak and from yeah. the berry or the uh, grapes. Yeah, but you see what I mean? It's more. Uh, you, it's kind of like a more of a, like a berry, yeah. red grape. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Flavor. It's more like raspberries. Or yeah, like yeah. That. Um, it's just to me the taste is a bit more fresh, whereas the the aroma is a bit more yeah, oaky and woody and yeah. So let's get down to business. Yeah. What do you think? I think this is two thumbs up. I really love yeah. I love that juicy mango thing and then like a spicy ginger snap and yeah. great like tartness and I'd also oaky. say it's, this is also oaky, like dry oak. Yeah. I'd also say two thumbs up for both of them, but yeah. this one has to get a special note because it's so unique. I don't yeah, think I've very had special. anything like that before. No. This and is uh, uh, yeah. If, if you like ginger, yeah, and, and and you like like a twist of something a bit more juicy, not too spicy, this is for you. Yeah, because it's really nice and yeah, it just works. So, uh, cheers, guys. Cheers. And uh, hopefully we'll find Peter someday. Yeah, someday. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're probably doing what is going to be supposedly the final beer on camera for Brewers Kibble 2019. What a great festival. And I'm here with James. Some of you guys might know James. James Marshall. Yeah. Yeah, no, James just means Marshall. Yeah. Uh, from Rampant Line Reviews. Uh, fellow YouTuber, originally from Scotland, right? Yeah, we relocated to Sweden back in 2015. Never looked back. Too many good beers in Scandinavia. And you've been uh, to this festival quite a few times, right? This is I. Uh, this is the third time. So I was here second year. I've been here every year since. So definitely one you want to come to in Scandinavia. I mean, this is probably the Swedish equivalent of this Yeah, season. it is. I, I agree. It's a fantastic festival. So far, there's been so many great beers, many great people as well. Uh, and uh, we're finishing with, at least for my part, something that's pretty interesting. This is uh, from Fanta Flora. This is their Resident Mices from What do you have? Um, I went for the uh, Milan Haley Pan, if I remember the name correctly, from Haley Brigley there in Malmö. So they just done a nice little session out there from the local breweries. So it's these guys do. If you think you like. Um, USO5, the OG, it's a very like classic. Right. They had their highly pan, it's like a really it's classic old school IPA, Citra Simple, it's really good, and this is just a session version. This is, uh, you know, it, it smells more like a wild ale. Yeah. If you want to have a smell there, it's than a lager. It's got like lots of bread and a character funk, but it's also got that same kind of refreshing, crisp, and cleanliness of your ale. It's got that little sort of grape and Guinness in it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, my one, uh, that's, this one's very bready, a little bit biscuity, um, mangoey, not so sure of the orange, quite mangoey. Like, yeah, mango. Yeah. It's also a little bit spicy. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit kind of floral aromatic. 
Give it a taste, man. Cheers. Let's go. Let's launch it. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like, it, to me, this is like American Wild Ale kind of beer, but it has like that crispness and like sweet malt profile you associate with lagers, and then loads of wet, uh, bread. Like for my piece, funkiness and like lots of tart lemon. It's not really sour, it's funky and tart. It's really refreshing. Yeah, I mean, this one's quite sort of pale and, uh, and ready, like you know, just that usual kind of pale malt, malt base. Not even biscuity, you know, it's just to have that sweetness to it. But you've got, you know, floral hops, a little bit of grassiness in there, and then it's got a little bit of that kind of dark passion to it, great for it. It's quite different to what you would expect, actually. Huh? Do a switch. Yeah, that's still small. Oh, this one's nice. Oh, really refreshing. It also has a little bit of bitterness, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's... Which is quite nice. That one's very... It's, it is a straight up session. It was quite a floral, fair session, wasn't it? Yeah. Your, your one's... This reminds me quite a little bit of some of the early Brick Reed stuff. Sharp. A little bit tart at the beginning. And, and the breadiness and sweetness of lager for much. Yeah, no, it's like it's almost like a silver lager. It's really it is. It's uh, very refreshing. And there's those like spicy, it's a little bit phenolic as well. It's nice beers to end on. Uh, for, at least for the, we're going to try more stuff. Yeah. I think so. Because we still got like an hour and a half to go. But I thought we should do a little wrap up and I thought it would be fun to have James on. Because we, we never really did a video together, but we met like once in COVID. Yeah, we met at uh, MBCC. At him of it, right? Yeah, him of it in 2016. Yeah, something like that. It was a while ago. You know, I mean, it's, we were actually quite close together, but it's about four hours to Albor. Yeah. For me from Loon, so we've never had much, many chances to film together, so that's something I think we need to fix for, uh, for the future, yeah. MBCC. Yeah, or Bruce Kimmel or something like that. Yeah, we'll sort it out. We'll figure it out, but it's cool to have you on your channel. It's great to meet you in person again, but having you on the channel as well. Um, I will say for this one, yours, I would say one and a half thumbs up. So I do thumbs when it's... Is, is it, am I right in remembering it's two thumbs up if it's like... Really good. Reason. And I'll say one and a half on this one as well. Yeah, it's I mean, nice, but they're not like completely mind-blowing, but they're great, like easy going more beers to finish on. I mean, I, yeah, I agree with that assessment of yours. For me, if I compare this to the regular Hurley plan, their original, this one isn't quite as good as that. Um, this, I like, I, I'm a bit biased when it comes to West Coast, the IPAs like this, I like a bit of caramel and a biscuit. This one's like one of these old school ones where it's pale more and then it's all about the box. And I don't like that, I like a little bit of uh, caramel biscuit. But as a drinkable beer, it's good. Yeah. So, just it's all subjective. All subjective. It is. Brett, do you want to come in last minute talk about your final beer? There he is, Brett of Anamaisis. What are you having? Uh, I'm having Forager's Joyce, which is a plum red wine barrel aged sour. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. It's mostly plummy, has notes of like a red winey, lightly tanniny thing, um, maybe a bit of like a peachy thing, but it's, it's yeah, it's quite simple actually. Um, that was it? Yep. It's like, it's not really sour, it's, no, it's also quite easy going. Yeah, like, like you know, um, like a ripe plum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with a like a red winey oaky finish. What would you give it in terms of thumbs? One and a half. One and a half. Yeah. So that's us pretty much signing off for Brewskyville 2019. Thanks a ton to Marcus and the Brewski guys for inviting us. Hope to go again next year. It's been great so far. Uh, what a chill and relaxed festival. So I think what we're gonna go do now is get this gear away. Try some of the last few beers that are left because a lot of breweries they've had stuff kicked. And uh, yeah, maybe have some food. I don't know. We'll see. But great festival. Definitely worth to come to if you haven't been before. 
And so we're gonna say cheers. And Lanja. And as always, guys, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook page, Twitter, all the social media stuff. And we're gonna see you guys in another on the road video somewhere in Scandinavia or who knows. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, bye. Come bye.